for. Oh. It's my soapbox. If you have important things to say, you use a soapbox. I'm going to come over one time, like just randomly. Like one no, you're not. Don't, no, listen, don't to me, listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. One day I'm going to come over, like randomly, like on a weekend, and I'm going to teach you how to work everything because I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at like flowing with the music and the sound bites and stuff like that. I'm That's not my bag. And you kind of have a background in that kind of stuff, so I kind of want to just give you that. I got you, man. So, like, one day I'm going to just teach you how everything goes, and I'm just going to let you handle that. Yeah, handle man, that whenever you want to, like, just have me <laughs> work the shit, let I me know. I got you. But um, welcome to episode 195 of The Soapbox. Here's your boy, Sunny Tay. We got Karan, a.k.a. Amal, to my left with the Elizabeth Track Club hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's standing up, too, with the New York <laughs> state of mind. I see you. That's hard. I see you. With the New York Yankee fitted on. You know what I'm saying? I got you, Comfit. Comfit. Repping, repping. <laughs> got myself we got Sunny Tay. Tay in the building, you know what I'm saying? With the fresh retwist. This girl just freshly re- retwisted his head. <laughs> Shout out to Solange. Shout out to Solange, you know what I'm saying? We got the Unite sweatshirt Oh yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. From my boy over here. <laughs> yep, yep. Put me on. And we got... I know. We got a returning guest, a returning <laughs> guest. <laughs> Lovely Jonesy in the building. You hey feel y'all. me? How are you? How I'm are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be back. I'm so excited to be here. Like, yes. It's been uh, like two, two, years. two years. Two years since we had last had you on the podcast. We yeah. had you in my yeah. backyard and shit yeah. during the summertime. <laughs> that was vibe, you know. I really like that. It. A lot of people like the backyard look. So. That was like my first time, I think, being on a podcast. Oh, word? Yeah. Yeah, one of my first times. That was time. your first time, really? Yeah. That was a dope episode. That was fun. I think that was Solange's first time uh, being a co-host, too. Yeah, she was officially a co-host on that day. Yeah, that was the first time. With her blue wig and shit. History was being made. Yeah, let's amazing. talk about it. Talk Thank about you for it. making a journey to Jersey, yes. yo. Because yes. I know you had a long-ass car ride. I had a nice long car ride. It was fun. It but was you, cute. But you were just saying how like you you think that's like a necessary thing for you. Yeah, because it's nice to get to um, just be alone for a minute and hear your thoughts. Um, you know kind of get that one-on-one time with yourself it's it's fun yeah, get the yeah. vibe yeah so. how you been i'm good i've been really good i feel great like um this has been a very transitional year i mm. would say um so a lot of adjusting and pivoting but other than that it's been really dope i've been like i feel like as a person i've developed a new sense of self in a great way like mm. this new perspective of life so it feels really good How's how's your mental health been? Because I know the last time you were on, it was like kind of the well a little bit after COVID. It was like yes. maybe a few months after COVID. Yes, um, it was like the summertime, and I think mm-hmm. COVID was like in the in the in the fall. Yeah, but um, we were semi open up. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. it was semi open. How do you think since then? Like how what what have you been doing to just like keep your mental health kind of sane? So that's really good because COVID for me um, was something that was necessary in that moment i think because i had the opportunity Mm. to like really stand still and sit still and it didn't nothing felt rushed in that moment Mm -hmm. um i was still working i was a um what were they calling it the damn the pandemic (laughs) the the pandemic for real though but um (laughs) I was like a prioritized worker. I forgot the. Oh, name. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so you had to keep so working. So I had to keep working it. throughout okay. the pandemic, and I was finishing up um, my last year, my last year, my last semester in college. Mm-hmm. So. So you was busy. That yeah yeah I was I was busy. Um, there was moments of like <laughs> clarity. A lot of times to like kind of rebrand because I was still working on just create at that yes, time. I so. Saw that. Mm-hmm. I was rebranding that. So there was a lot of there was a lot of momentum happening in a different way. Like it was another way that I was having to navigate COVID for myself. What's the name was popping at that time? Um, that app. What was that? <laughs> Oh, uh, Clubhouse. Clubhouse, yeah. Clubhouse. Remember Clubhouse, wow. bro? Mm-hmm. It's still kind of people still be on Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's that was like, a hype, though. Yeah. I made a lot of connections on Clubhouse. I'm not going to hold oh, God. you. Oh, me too. Me a lot too. of good connections. Clubhouse is fire. How... Um, so you said 2003 was a transitional. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask this one question that I asked about your day, Karan. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, Don't worry. I know you said 2003 is 2003. Uh, 2023 have been a transitional year for you. Mm-hmm. How are you with change? Do you like change as a person? Like in general? Or is, some, is that something you had to like get used to or get I've comfortable l- with? I've learned to get... 
I've learned to look at change in a different perspective. I, <laughs> I'm a Taurus, so sometimes hey, I like Taurus gang, like, oh. the bull gang. You know I like things to you know stay, to be nice and stable mm-hmm. and like consistent. Sure. And stabi- you know, I yeah. love that. I, lo- I, I th- it's necessary for me. Mm-hmm. And um, this year, I, I feel like I've been met with like lots of different forms of resistance. A lot mm-hmm. of opportunity to. Um, I had to approach things differently this past coming year. I had mm. experienced some losses and things of that such. So it was, uh, it was, things were hitting me and I felt like it was coming at a fast rate. And I had to learn how to not be self destructive in that moment or learn to not re- react that. too hard or yeah. react too fast and give myself a second to really reflect and then make a, make a move that was necessary. Mm. But yeah. Um, this year humbled me. I feel that's, like. that's real talk. <laughs> wow, that's real it humbled talk. me. I hear that. How do you feel about change since you're a Taurus as well? Do you feel the same sentiments? I like change, man. I kind of I'm the type of person where um, I don't like when things are too like I'm like when I had I I I, I kind of get I don't want to say bored easily, but when I get into routine at times, mm-hmm. it can have me feel a little stagnant. And like I'm the type to I kind of like new change, like. I don't know, but maybe I'm just like. So you're the type of person that will like that. break their routine. Like you know, how some people in the morning have a certain routine. Like mm. they get up, eat a brush your teeth, have like the same cereal, yeah, have a coffee, and then go out the day. Like you're yeah. the type of person like I need to no, break. That's something. not me. Every day is like I something mean, it, there's like similar. There's stuff, of course, that I do that I have to do every day. Right. But nah, that's that's kind of why. Becomes I ha- mundane. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I kind of have to. I, I I don't like stag. I feel stagnant at times, you know. Okay. I like change. Okay. I think I would agree with you guys. I think I do like change, but I need something different. Like, cause like you said, it becomes um, mundane, and also I start to get not insecure, but I start to think like, damn, is this my life right now? Mm-hmm. Like, just doing the same routine for the past two years and i'm like but if it's stuff that you like doing it that yeah. might be a positive yeah but i guess i'm the type of person where, like i see more in my life and like i want more in my life so i know like if i i know like there's you have to be uncomfortable for a little bit mm-hmm. part of your life and i feel like if i get stuck in this level of comfort comfort comfortability for like mm-hmm. the next amount of years i feel like i'm just yeah. gonna be so used to that that I won't know how to react when something might change my life or my routine and then I'm like oh shit yeah I also feel like change is also inevitable I feel like that's it's just bound to happen it's right. one of those things that is you wake up one day and things can be c- completely different that's why I've learned to not plan too hard mm. in certain mm. places because yeah. it just leaves some room for things to you know swivel around a little bit so right yeah it's helpful in me. I don't know. I guess perspective on change has helped a lot, too. So. I hear that. Uh, Are you a realist, Dante? A realist? Yeah. What's like r- What's a realist? Like, a realist is somebody who... Um, <sighs> we should look it up. Should we just look it up? What's the <laughs> definition? <laughs> I mean, I can give you my up. definition, but, yeah. I mean... Should, yeah, you can let's, look Let's up get the, the actual <laughs> definition of a realist. I mean, my definition, I feel like it's somebody who... Um, I would say somebody who kind of is, of course, very realistic and kind of uh, accepts whatever, like, situation that they're in. Um, oh, literally, a person who accepts the situation as is and is prepared to deal with anything accordingly. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Second, um, an artist or writer whose uh, creative style is characteristics is rest- uh, represented by people or things that actually are them. So, um, yeah, I guess somebody who just accepts whatever situation and kind of deals with it as is. Or yeah. a person who, like, dreams big and kind of goes for, like, the biggest thing that they can dream of and just, like, aims towards that. See, but I I fuck with that. Like, I love big dreamers. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm all for big dreamers, but I'm also... I guess, I guess I am a realist because I'm okay with whatever happens. Like, whatever... Mm-hmm. Like whatever, whatever card you might be. Yeah, down. like I have a plan A, plan B, plan C. So if plan A don't work out. I'm I'm content with plan B. Mm. If plan B don't work out, I'm content with plan C. And if that don't work out, if like D and F is not what I wanted, but it's the cards that got laid out to me after all the consequences of my actions, yeah. I'd be like, all right, mm-hmm. 
I guess this is what it is. I and I, I'll list. adjust to that. I think you are. I think I am a realist. Okay. Is that a bad thing? No. I mean, it's pr- perspective. Everybody is personality based. It's mm-hmm. perspective. You know. How you doing, Karan? <laughs> How are you? Oh, shit. You don't even want to know how my month has been going. My month is just crazy, man. You had a crazy month? Is it? <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a wild month. But I'm doing good, man. I'm like, um, I'm a pretty, you know me, I'm, I'm pretty positive. Mm-hmm. Um, I just be happy to, to be here. So I just be dealing with shit. But yeah, it's, it's a wild month, man. There's always shit popping up. But yeah, I'm good, though. I'm good. Good, good, good. How you doing? It's been a minute since we uh seen each other. Yes, it has. I mean, it we has. recorded a few episodes, but no. cor- apparently you didn't release them. So nah, you know, I didn't release that. We're episode. dealing with this on air because you know <laughs> I didn't confront Dante <laughs> about that. Yeah, I was mad. You had me take up my whole up fucking Sunday to not release some shit. <laughs> but what, what's what's with that, Dante? Explain I didn't, yourself. I didn't like the I didn't like the vibe of that episode. I liked it. I, I was laughing. I bet you liked I that. I was episode. laughing the whole time. That shit was funny to me. Nah, it was bad vibes. You know, it was like bad. Okay. Yeah. Um. Plus, if I put it out, people would have heard some things. They business being told. So, to, so to put you on, they was being um, those. They was being messy. Who's not being messy? Solange had a very bad day the day before that. Yeah. So she came into the podcast Ooh. feeling all that energy still, mm-hmm. and, and she tried to come here and like she tried to push it off and try to we try to have a podcast, yeah, like a normal podcast. But you know, it came out like she couldn't really. And I'm saying she wasn't wilding the podcast, wasn't screaming at, at niggas. Sure. Like she was just. You could tell that she was very still fluctuated about what happened the mm-hmm. night before. And she released, like, her feelings about yes. it. So I guess wasn't the best thing to do. Yeah. Sh- well, she told me she didn't want to release it. She didn't want to put that side of herself yeah. out there, the public. I understand. Which I understand. And I've also, and I'm different because I'm a type of podcast where I don't mind being vulnerable. Oh, and I don't mind. That. Like, That's people, got you in trouble, though. A lot it's got me in trouble. Like, I don't mind people seeing a little page of my life. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay with showing that side, but I know other people aren't. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to be selfish and put an episode out there that someone doesn't like how they're being presented. Portrayed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Portrayed. So I respect them. Yeah, I didn't, think I, it was, it. I didn't think it was good to put that episode out. You I know? was looking forward to that. Right at 12 o'clock, I was refreshing my, nah. my timeline. Like, what episode <laughs> at, man? Nah, that would have been a bad episode, bro. <laughs> I was looking forward to that. That would have been a bad that. episode. Niggas would have cussed, cussed me the fuck out. But um, you think it's something you can release in the far future? On Patreon. <laughs> I think on charge. It's funny because all those Maybe episodes, Joe Bunch we, shit. <laughs> all those episodes that we never released, I still have them, and mm-hmm. I thought about it. We like, I thought about too. like releasing them, like on some Patreon shit, or just like when I'm older and like everybody's comfortable <laughs> with what right. happened. It's like <laughs> fuck it, let's right. just release some archives. Let's just put this episode out it's and. Funny. It's not. I feel like one day I'm going to have to do it. Mm-hmm. Like one day I'm going to just have to be spicy. And like, yeah. let's just put this out there. Let's just see what happens. Let's just <sighs> spice. throw a thought blindly. Let's no, see what's next. You're not doing that. Nah, so. Bro, I'm I'm with the shits, bro. It's just people. I need to. You care about people's feelings. I care about people's feelings. And I'm, I don't want to make someone feel uncomfortable. Like if it's just me, if I'm just feeling like, like you know me, I've, there's plenty of times I got myself in trouble on this podcast. Yeah. Plenty of times. I don't. I, but you self sabotage. Like other people can't do that down to you. Like, I know you have you have morals and you have respects. And I respect that. That's why I didn't like <laughs> press you about the, the episode. I'm like, I know what it is. And mm. That's respectable. I, I respect you as a man for doing that. You know I what appreciate saying? you, girl. Shout out to you, Dante. <laughs> but I was looking forward to the episode. If you were to put it out, I was definitely going to repost it and look at it. For real? I bet you was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. So I was so to transition to um, vulnerable and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um Oh wait, my day was good. I forgot you asked me about my day. My day, my day was good. My week has been good. Um, so you've been working. Work, yep. Always working. The IT life, you know, gotta do what IT you gotta life. do. <laughs> um, it's been a very good week. Um, no beef at the office. No. Nice. No beef at all. No beef at all. Okay, I've, we I've been. Nobody. Nah, I ain't press okay, nobody. Okay, cool. I've been very. Um, what you call? What you call me? Um, Your synergy. No, no, no. I've been very like. Oblivious with a lot of stuff around me. You think so? Yeah. Like, on I've purpose? Been very, like you've been like, trying to block out shit? Yeah. On I purpose? Block out a lot of stuff. Like, I forgot next week was Thanksgiving, bro. Like, I've just mm. been, like, focused on, like, me getting ready to go to Chicago and me planning, like, my goals for 2024. Mm. I, I completely forgot it was my <laughs> nephew's birthday this weekend. It forgot happened. it was Thanksgiving next weekend. Yeah. And forgot I had to, like, book a flight 
for um my vacation the following week. Like it was just a whole bunch of stuff I forgot. Wow, yeah. not the vacation. Come on. I forgot to book it. I was just so like selfishly like I wasn't talking about. It. I was just like selfishly like just Working. like you said, just like taking care of myself sure. and like making sure like my mental was good. Mm-hmm. And like I just completely forgot like the other like tree branches in my life that I need to look after. Mm. Okay. So it's just been a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. also, I was talking to somebody, and we was talking about, like, what's the one I'm looking for? Um, weird X mm-hmm. that we have as a person. So, you know, like, there's a lot of X that people have as collectives, and there's <laughs> other X that's not really normal, but that, like, that bothers you. <laughs> yeah. So, we was talking about, like, different X about what uh, each other have and stuff like that. So I wanted to come to the podcast. I wanted to ask, do you guys have any, like, weird icks that bothers you? Like, just weird-ass icks. So, like, one of the icks that bothers me, <laughs> it's a weird ick. I hate coming to the office and people telling me good morning. <laughs> <laughs> what? I swear to God. I hate that You never lived down south. I hate that Like in the Caribbean or something. Bro, I hate being told good That's morning in the office. That's it's hilarious. It bothers I me. I hate before. being told good morning in the office. That fucking Is it just me. in the office, please? Or like it's just in the office. <laughs> like, you know, I don't mind going to Granny's house. Granny say good morning. I say good morning yeah. to Granny. I don't mind saying good morning to Granny. But like, my coworker telling me good morning when I just woke up. I just woke up and he said, oh, good morning. And I'm just like. You're weird. <laughs> so bad. I, so how do you respond back? Do you, like, I do a little head nod yeah, or just, talk to I, me. I don't do eye contact. I literally have what? tunnel vision. I just walk in the, uh, in the office, tunnel vision. Like, I don't make eye contact with nobody. Like, you know how you walk across, you see your coworker, you do a little, like, yeah. fake, like, smile, like the. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. like that. None of that. No, wow. It's just wow. straight tunnel vision. That don't sound healthy, Dante. I'm not gonna lie. It's Is a that, weird ick. Uh, that's an interesting ick. It's a weird <laughs> ick. Like, so, ew, you I just know said you good morning. Some weird icks. <laughs> no, no. All really. of us got some weird icks. You got a weird ick? Um, about people that you don't like? People are like things that, that happen. Just people in general that they do? Um, I think <laughs> one of the th- something that I just don't like is uh, if it's more, it's like a spatial thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, I really don't like smelling people's like like breaths, mm. even if it doesn't smell bad. Like it's just something about the like. I can understand that. Though. I don't even know how to explain it. Like the rawness of it. <laughs> 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 you know what? I feel I, that. I don't yo. know how to explain it. Like that. it's just something so like fleshy about it that it's just ah, it just it's just like hmm. so you know like in clubs, someone's like like the music loud and shit so people have to be like, up close to you like so you be smelling niggas like you know what i'm saying like because i i guess it comes in waves and moments because yeah. like i know when to like turn it up but it just <laughs> like Why damn that hilarious that's hilarious <laughs> i feel you on that though <laughs> People be having hot breath though. Like right. when it just happens unexpectedly. It's right. Like, damn. Okay, wow. Y'all are funny, yo. Y'all, I wasn't expecting none of these. <laughs> none of these answers. Yo. You don't have a weird egg, bro. See, everything annoys me. So like, that's the thing. Like, that's I, great. I just, I be having to just tuck that like <laughs> all day every day. I'm, but I'm, I'm asking. You I mean, share one of them. I, I hate I like I don't, I don't like when people like uh, fart and burp like around me. That's always been a thing. Like I'm the type to I'm the type of dude. I'll go in the bathroom. Pass gas and flush. Like I'm that type of dude. <laughs> <laughs> like we in prison type of shit. No like I don't like when people like pass do that gas shit. And flush is jokes. You flush while you pass gas? When I'm like around people. I like when there's just people around, you know, I'm not What if you have to burp? Do you like go in the bathroom to burp? Nah, but like I'm like I'm I'm very polite. Like I, I grew up like you know in the West Indian family. So we like very, mm. very I like I'm I don't know, just little mannerism stuff mm. like I don't like. I don't like when people litter either. That like irks me. I'll be seeing, I'll be seeing people just throw shit. I'll be like, nigga, pick that. Shit. Yeah, that that does get me. That feels make me feel yeah. type of way. I agree. What else is the weird? Ick? I'm glad y'all don't got really bad. Y'all don't, I don't like when I'm. I'm I don't like when I'm walking behind somebody because I, I be go. It's just little shit. I be. I don't like when I'm walking behind somebody and they smoking a cigarette and that shit get in my yeah, face. Yeah, nah, mm-hmm. I get tight. I get tight. I, I get definitely tight. am the type of person that if somebody coughs and like doesn't cover their mouth when I have to walk in that way, I will mm, hold my breath. Yeah, really, me hold too. Breath. I will hold my breath until I get into a, to a, to a, like a vicinity that feels safe to breathe yeah. again. 
<laughs> it's just weird. Anytime a bus or like a big truck passes me by, I hold my breath so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So I don't get the fumes in my nose. <laughs> This is good. Nah, that's yeah, funny. I do the same shit, so. <laughs> it's like, or like when the train passed by, like, I don't want to, in, like, inhale the train, like, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. You're smoke, funny. So I hold my breath. You're funny, Can bro. I tell y'all a story that happened to me two days ago? And Please. I And I got to get this out because it, it really bothered me, but I, I'm not trying to hold it against anybody. Go so ahead. the other day, I'm, like, in the city, and I'm at my favorite, like, pizza spot. I'm about to get a slice, and there's a homeless man in the pizza in the pizzeria, mm-hmm. just, like, asking people to buy him, like, food. Right. And, like, the dude in front of me, he was like, yo, I'll give you a dollar. And he's like, yo, I don't want money. I'm just I'm just hungry. Like, I just want food. This is un-American. So I'm like, nah, I, I got to get this guy food. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, get him get him a slice. Get him. I'm like, you want one, two slices? He's like, yeah, can I get a slice? I'm like, I bet. I'm going to get you a slice. Mm-hmm. Got him a slice. Oh, I'm waiting for the slice. And this dude's walking around. He's like, yo, can you buy me some spaghetti and meatballs, too? <laughs> and this shit's, like, $15. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nah, that's kind of expensive, bro. Like, I'm not, nah, I got you a slice. Yeah. So when the slice comes, but he's like, he's like, come on, bro. I just want some spaghetti and meatballs. I'm like, want some and I'm, like meatballs. I'm like, do you want the slice or not? Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, but I, t- I want some meatballs. So I'm like, bro, I just got you with a slice or two. Like, yeah. so he's like, all right. So he takes a slice, looks at it, and then throws it oh. on the floor, fam. Like. And I really, and I swear that I was about to black on him. Like, I was about to, I, so I'm like, so you just going to disrespect? Like, I just started like, and then yeah. I caught myself and I'm just like, I'm like, that's wow. fucked up, bro. And then I just I got wild. my shit and bounced. Like, <laughs> See, I can't say it no more. I had to release that because that was, I was about to. No, nah, that's out of pocket. Yeah, that was, that was outrageous. He threw out that slice right in front of you, bro. Well, he didn't throw, he threw it on the table and then it slid off the plate. And it fell down. And it fell, fam. Wow. So I'm just like, fam, you just, I'm, you going to waste my heart on But I'm like, <laughs> you probably had a three dollar slice, yeah. And, and no, and it was like a fancy, like it wasn't like oh, a, it was a dollar slice. slice. It was like a five dollar slice, you know what, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I just had to wow. release that. Sorry, guys. Wow, that irked me. I was trying to do a good deed, but that's not gonna deter me from Dude, doing no good let deeds. It, no. Yeah, no. There's some homeless people that definitely would appreciate that slice for sure. I had to let that out. I'm sorry, guys. You're good. This is a safe space. <laughs> safe space. Sorry, it's a late night pod, guys, too. It's like 9 o'clock, but, yeah. It's the, the time in which you vent. <laughs> I had to get that out. So. I'm sorry. Give me one second. I'm glad everybody's doing good, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so. You said that you took a break from Just Create mm-hmm. for a little bit. Um, what made you want to do that? Well, around that time, that's also when I started to DJ. I wanted to, um, as much as I was, like, finding a space to pour out to people, um, Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I was feeding myself creatively. Facts. And, um, I wanted to find another outlet in which I can do that. So, around that time, um, and also I, I wanted... Me taking that hiatus from Just Create, I wasn't not not working on it. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, finding a way to rebrand, remarket, and, like, just understand um, that creative business in a different way and seeing how it can be more of a benefit to the people that I was trying to serve them a service. Right. Um, So that was part of it, too. Um, So And also around that time, I was understanding, I'm like, dang, I think I actually need help. I I actually need hands on deck to get this running and stuff in certain areas. Um, and there was, there's cases where it was hard to do everything, um, just with just one person. So that yeah. was, I had to be realistic about that. Mm. So that was part of it. But yeah, so then I started, um, DJing around that time. So, um, and how has that experience been? Like putting it was your all focus in DJing. It was, it was, it was amazing because it felt nice to learn a new craft and something that I was really interested in and had like a passion, have a passion for it. And mm-hmm. I really love music. So I was like, I want to see how far and where in which way that this DJing can take me and open up, open up all these creative doors for me. And mm-hmm. I get to not only do that, but like play around with music and, right. and make it do things that I wanted to do and sound the way I wanted to sound and get to share that too with people. So it was a fun journey, a really exciting journey. What was your first introduction to, like, DJing? Like, what was the actual experience? Um, 
so I remember very vividly when I got first got the initial thought to DJ and I was with a couple of friends. I was um still in I was still in college at the time and I was just like I think I just blurted out like, yo, I really want a DJ and my friend was like, Yeah, you should do it and then moving forward, um I when I was like still doing just create at that time, mm-hmm. I was going to um this place in Troy, it's called Collective Effort and I would book the studio out there and to like interview the artists and things like that and such or whatever. And I think I had mentioned it to one of the owners there, Patrick, and I was like, Hey, I want a DJ, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And they, um, he showed me the deck. He showed me like what to download right. and mm-hmm. this, that, and the third. And, um, another DJ friend of mine, um, he actually, when I did my first ever pop up, he DJed there and I also had an interest too. So I would also go to him, uh, to like get some information on like oh what does this do how do you operate this and this that, and the third so mm-hmm. those were like my first ins and outs of it I would go to the studio space in Troy and just sit down with the little um, with the deck and DJ for a little bit it was terrible but <laughs> it was fun it was I still have the pictures and everything and um and then I around COVID time it was getting checks so I was like I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna do right by this and then I now. went and got some I got my own equipment I got speakers okay. headphones yeah okay. I started to invest in it because I really was like I was like I believe in this and mm-hmm. I believe that it's going to you know be a wonderful experience for me and then I started you know bedroom DJing I guess in my room so hmm. <laughs> and it just like went up from there. Interesting. Type of thing, so mm? that's very interesting. I actually really like how like the DJ and culture is like kind of evolved. No, it's years. definitely, and I wanted to ask about that culture because I've always been curious about like, what that DJ and culture is like. Mm-hmm. Like making connections in there, like friends, not really enemies, but like people that you look at as like oh, I got watch out for you type of mm-hmm. shit, or even and, just like, like different artists that you different like, artists come across. That you come across. So, yeah. so like, how's that? How's like the social aspects of that getting into that community been like? I guess um, it's fun. It was very fun. Um, just like in any any career and field, you know, you obviously got to pay attention to make sure, be aware of your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Like I would, I would say that for anybody, yeah. to anybody, no matter where you're at. Because yeah. um, I feel like that could be a little predator. Like the music yeah. industry in general is a little predatory, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd be and especially as a woman, as a black woman, yeah, you know, sure. you just always got to, you know, be on your your p's and q's Facts. with a lot of things, and you know, DJing in the in the space. You obviously, there are you. I feel like it's also a, a, a space in where you got to be like mentally strong too, because it's easy to 100%. to you know spiral in a space where you're constantly getting passed, especially when it comes to like alcohol. Like as a DJ, you get unlimited uh, things, so you're just being mindful of what you're doing as a DJ because your health is important too. For sure. So it's like one, yeah. every booking you you know if you got multiple bookings within a night and you get to go anywhere and just like constantly have these drinks and blah 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 stuff like that you know got to pay attention to your health. So yeah. that's something I became very uh, aware of. Um I met a lot of amazing people. I've met so I met so many people from different places, different states. Mm-hmm. Um underscore av was one of the first people that actually booked me out in the city and i Ooh. met them via clubhouse which was pretty wow. cool yeah okay and um yeah no it was pretty that was that was really fun um was you nervous i don't know me and nervousness is weird because again mm. my perspective my perspective on things don't give me I, there's times where i've been nervous but i t- i learned to transmute my nervousness into like um excitement mm. Um, because that's really all it is yeah, for me yeah. is that like, yes. um, it's just because you, you don't know what you have no control of the outcome. So you're, you're making all these scenarios in your head and it's honestly getting you all hyped up. So I learned to like, just divvy it down and like, let me wait till I actually get there. If I am going to be nervous, let me get there first. <laughs> so, right. so like that helps with it too. But mm. the community and the DJ scene, I feel like it's pretty dope. Um, a lot of the women that I've got to um, interact with as DJs have been super um, helpful in giving me tips and just being open to getting me on on bookings. Um, I want to also give a shout out to Bodega Party because shout out to Bodega Party. Shout out to Bodega Party. She is running the city up. I love that for her. Um, uh, she would put me on a lot of bills. Um, 
she she has an amazing DJ career, in my opinion. I feel like she's also a, a dope DJ as well. So it was really nice to be surrounded by other women in DJing because yeah. I'm not going to hold you. I feel like the women the women that are uh, in the DJing scene right now got to turn. Bro, nah, there's so the many They got to turn. the same shit. Yeah. Their sets be the best, bro. It should be the best. And shout out to all the different platforms because I know like uh, uh, platforms like Boiler Room, they put me on to so many oh my like gosh, great yeah. DJs and just like from all over the all over the world. Like there's a lot of talent too. There's women, a just lot people in general, of especially women. Yeah, bro. When we went to that um, the Patreon party. party, it was yeah. all women. All women DJs. They yeah. all killed Fire. it. All fucking killed it, bro. Fire. They've been killing the game. Yo, but yo, so so you've been DJing for like what, 103 years. Yeah. Like three years? Yeah. Yo, three and years I feel ago. like you've been like doing some. I mean, we be we be peeping shit. Me oh. and Dante, we know you. So we be peeping <laughs> shit. You be you've done some like popping events. Like mm. so, um, I feel like that's so dope for you to like be so early in this and have it's like it seems like really good events that you're doing. Like what's been your favorite event or just experience in general so far? Um you be doing some fire shit. We be looking and we be yeah, like, damn, like, you really got some good. Yeah, I've done some cool, cool events. Yeah. One of my favorites I can think of is, uh, so I was DJing with a group called Bungalow Collect. They, mm. um, they're all, they're all from different parts, but right now they're located out in LA. Um, dope artists. You should, you guys should definitely check them out. Yeah, Bungalow no, Collect. We'll check them out. Um, and they booked me to DJ with them. Uh, or to be their DJ for the Sony Music Hall, mm. and that was a really fun experience. Um, big crowd, right. um, like it just blew my mind that that was like happening. Just to be center stage with with a group of artists and having that experience. I also really love DJing at um, pianos. Oh, you yeah, shout yeah, out to pianos. I did. That was like a really oh, really good see. set for me. That shout was out a, DJ Beta. Yeah, that you was that was fun. Yeah, and um. Spinning, spinning, uh, getting the opportunity to, to spin at Dave East's um, from the deli grand opening of the store. That. Was, that was hard. That was, that was pretty How'd you cool. get that opportunity? So there was an event uh, called Harlem Gives Back. And it was in Harlem. And okay. I was DJing. Uh, uh, I was DJing for another artist, Wavy Baby, who's actually from uh, from Cali. Mm -hmm. She came out here, really another really dope artist. And that's another great thing about being a DJ, um, too, you is you meet a lot of a lot of underground dope artists that's yeah. just like going hard. Like I met some fire artists for real. Yeah. But um, um, she, I was DJing for her, and Connie Diamond was there, Davies and his crew. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of dope people were uh, were out there, yeah. and. Um, and it was Harlem, so it was like a, a f like a almost like a family and community event yeah. as well. So everybody was like out there. Everybody, all the neighbors was out there too. Mm -hmm. um, and Davies was around, and I see everybody was going up, getting pictures and stuff like that. And I wanted the opportunity too. So in my head, I'm always like trying to think strategically when I'm in moments. I'm like, there may be a cool opportunity here. Right. Um, outside of Davies being a great artist. I was like, I actually genuinely would love to like get an opportunity to see like what they're about and see what like what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had asked uh, when I got the opportunity to finally like get over there. Cause everybody was trying to get over there, so I had the opportunity. I was like, um, Hey, do you like ever have artists open for you or DJs specifically open for you at events and things like that? And um, I was trying my best to figure out like in ways in which I can have like a decent conversation in such a short period of time. And like with him directly, you're with asking him, him directly, directly? exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and I appreciate I appreciated him giving me um, the time because there's a lot of people that's like you know wants wanted wants the artist's attention and time yeah, so sure. that was pretty dope and um, his management got in contact with me I had the opportunity to uh, spend there I almost messed it up because. Ooh. I I'm terrible with saving like names and numbers and I'm mm. just like whatever I'll get back to it mm -hmm. and <laughs> I was already like down there in Harlem with my gear and everything like that ready to set up but <laughs> I had responded back like no I can't make it today but I was thinking that that was for somebody else oh. and it ended up being for it was their management oh, I was like wow. oh man oh, nice. but I was already there I was like now nah, I'm yeah. here I was like oh that was you <laughs> I was like, "Fuck." Oh, so, shit. but yeah. Did they respond back? Were they like? They was like, they was like, "Oh, okay." Oh, I was right. like, "All and right." We pull up to the event and they're like, "Oh, you actually coming?" Yeah, and Come I was because I was confused. I'm like, "I'm like, yeah, no, I was always coming." Look what right. you mean? Yeah. They're probably looking at me like, "No, you take." I was like, "Oh, that was your number." Damn. So yeah. Oh, uh, that's funny. 
that's dope though mm-hmm. like that's, that sounds like a dope experience it was it was an amazing experience and they were all um all super nice very welcoming um it felt like a lot of love so mm-hmm. that was that was a really great experience i have a question what do you think like with the DJing, what what kind of like avenue? Because it's like nowadays, there's so many different avenues. Like you see the people doing like different playlistings. There's, I mean, of course, just the traditional just party gathering. There's, there's like a lot of like avenues. DJ mm-hmm. DJing is like heading towards like where did like essentially Excuse in a perfect world. Like where do you see yourself? Like mm-hmm. you well, that's a great question. Um, I actually was talking to a friend about this. How I really want to focus on um, more club mashups mm. and dance mm. um and experimental with mashing up hip hop and jungle and drum and bass okay. and um UG, uh, UGK, UKG and, and things like that okay. and with today's hip hop as well so um that's where I want to go I think when I first started off DJing I was n- I was like nervous to try to um formulate all these different genres into one because I was too focused on, oh, no one's going to like that, just that and the third, mm. until I decided, like, hey, let me actually give these things a try experiment, and yeah. experiment with it. And, like, I know I like this. I know what sounds good together. Let's give it a try. And people have really responded well to it. So um, especially up where I'm at right now in upstate, I've been wanting to experiment with bringing more or let people get introduced to more jungle and drum and bass music right. and a lot of the um, UK garage right. mixing that with drill and things like that out here. So like, and it's been working. It's been mm. a really good response. Like I love seeing, I love playing like a, a classic jungle based um, song and no one really knows it, but they're vibing with it. And then I'd right. like start to transition into something that they know, like a, like a popular drill song or like just an artist that they're like, Oh yeah, I didn't never would have yeah, thought yeah, about yeah. that. So yeah. it's been fun. I was about to ask. So you like, so like, excuse me. Um, in all your sets, do you try to do like one experiment like tests on a mix? Yeah. I love to, um, because I'm still a student to this. Right. So, yeah. and I feel like the best way to learn is to try different things. 100%. So, um, outside of me taking the time to listen to uh, other sets and understand and really pay attention to um, transitions and even just like hard cuts and knowing when to drop in and things like that, because mm. that makes a difference as well. For sure. Um, I love to, yeah, I just love to try different techniques out with songs and music and changing bpms and pitches and things like that so it's literally a, it's really an instrument so um i just try to work with it practice do different things so man i love to ask this questions because i love to ask creators questions that are mm-hmm. really like focus on their craft what do you do in your off time because i saw that you had uh you had a painting yeah. That was one at the art gallery, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, she paints." I never Sorry. knew that. I was like, <laughs> um, part of her. So I, was, so it got me curious. Like, oh, I wonder. Like, I've always been curious. Like, what artists do on their off time when mm-hmm. they're not doing their craft. Like, mm-hmm. this man don't know how to fucking relax. <laughs> so he's always thinking about clothes and shit like that. So, um, and a bunch of other guests that we had in his field are the same way. Right. Like, they're very tunnel vision. It's like always working. Yeah. Always working. So, are you kind of like that? Like, you're always experimenting stuff in your bedroom or um do you do kind do you do other things to kind of like not cleanse your mind but kind of like just mm-hmm. you know just be what's what i'm looking for i guess cleanse your mind maybe that's yeah, what cleanse, i'm looking cleanse for mine is cool yeah i do um a lot of things i think at one point in time i did struggle with um knowing how to like relax and not work but i realized that it's important for me to experience life in order for me to be inspired and want to do other sure. creative things mm-hmm. so um i like to be active in the community and see what's going on so i will um i like to do a lot of things so i'll just <laughs> i guess i'll just list a couple of things that i'll do on, on my off time um I love being in nature, so when I anytime I find time to be oh, outside, if I can, if I can find a good place to hey. hike, go to a park, just chill. I love to do things like that. Right. I love I um, that. reading and different things like that. I definitely love doing some research, and um, I'm pretty interested in like quantum physics and stuff mm, like that. So, really? Yeah. So I like to get into like a rabbit hole and stuff like that. You yeah. Listening to like Billy Carson. You know, like Billy Carson. I don't think I'm that, I'm that Billy Carson. Yet, okay, but. look him over. He's he's into like quantum physics. And okay, shit. but we don't have to we don't have to chop it up with that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But um, 
yeah like to hang out with my friends the couple of friends that i got and like um do things like that okay. i love to cook hey, so i'll be doing your best me- what's your best dish Best so I just had a mac and cheese oh, uh, bake off, and I, knew, oh, and I, I won. So hey, won. talk okay. your shit. Come on, talk so, your shit. So yeah, and they're gonna need to run that one back. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I will say that I can throw down in the kitchen. So Come that's, on now. Okay. I love okay. to do things like that. Um, I love to just dance. I love doing all types of things. Like okay. awesome. That's fine. It just comes natural in a sense. I love drawing and painting. Um, that's been really fun. That's been. Uh, that's been exciting to me because as I started to draw and paint more, um, it, it really made me appreciate the artists and the art that we have in this world, like to a different degree. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. been really nice. That's what's that, up. Yeah. That's so um, Rocket Power, Invader Ooh. Zim. Oh, yes, Rocket Power is um, shit. Billy and Mandy, Courage, SpongeBob. Yeah. I have to put SpongeBob in there. I love SpongeBob. I fucking love SpongeBob. Hey Arnold. Million dollar question though: Doug. Were you a Nick, Nickelodeon, or Disney, Cartoon or Cartoon Network? Network? Yeah, fuck. Or you was a trader? You just watch all. You of was them. a trader. I did. I watched them all. I, <laughs> Nick, Disney, and Cartoon Network, and sometimes Boomerang. I watched it. Boomerang. Oh, you old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you old, yo. I have older siblings, so like they put me on okay. some stuff. That makes sense. So I was also like watching Dragon Ball Z every now and then. Okay, My I brothers watched that. it. Like, Nickelodeon to the death. Nickelodeon. Of Nickelodeon to the death. I had a I had a, a SpongeBob room, like <laughs> where um I painted everything blue. Uh-huh. I had like the um the life size sticker. Damn, this sounds whack as hell. <laughs> I had the life size sticker. And this is like when I'm like five six. Yeah. And then um that's when I got my first actually saltwater fish tank when I was five. And then mm-hmm. I had like I, I went in like a fish tank aquarium like room. So your top three cartoons are probably SpongeBob, like Spongebob, Bob, Bob, and Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. Uh, yeah, that was Jimmy one. Neutron, Spongebob. Damn. <laughs> There's so many. I don't know, man. Did you like Danny Phantom? I fucked with Danny Phantom. I fucked with Danny Phantom. I, I, I like Danny Phantom. Damn, that's a hard one. There's so many, though. Mm-hmm. I was like a proud family. Like, that's the one. That I, I love, like, proud family. I love, like, Curse, Carly Dog. Mm-hmm. Um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie is my shit. Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. <laughs> I was definitely a Cartoon Network guy. You was Cartoon Network, Love dude. Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Love Cartoon Network. You look like you was watching like Samurai Jack or some shit. You know what? <laughs> I, I liked it, bro, but it wasn't really my thing. Uh, I like um, Group Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Yes, that was tough. Um, Chowder. Chowder, Chowder, yes. I love Chowder. Chowder. For sure, for um, sure. The Misadventures of Flapjack. Yes, I mean that's shows. like newer. That's like newer. Yeah, shit, though. of course, like regular show, like Adventure Time. Adventure Time. Like, nah, those Adventure are my time. shits, bro. Yeah. Those Gumball are my shits. Is great too. Oh, fucking love Gumball. <laughs> fucking love Gumball. Y'all are funny. Nah, I love cartoons, bro. I love cartoons, bro. I can't help it. Are you an anime like mm-hmm. type of girl? I like anime. Yeah. Uh, favorite animes. Favorite animes. Yeah. All time. If you can um, Yeah. Uh, Dory Doro. I need to watch that. Everyone that. says that's oh, good. Dory Doro is really good. I have to watch that. Um, you never seen that, Dante? Never seen yeah, it. You no. the anime king. <laughs> okay. It's like a slice of life. I look at it. Dory Doro. Um. Uh, Psyche. <laughs> I like Psyche a little Psyche. bit. Yeah, I never seen that one either. Um, you seen that, Dante? <laughs> Damn. Okay. She put me on. Yeah. And um. Well, I'm gonna say two more: uh, Samurai Champloo and fire. and uh, Cowboy Bebop. Fire. Yes, Cowboy Bebop. Fire, fire. fire. Okay, mm. love me some Samurai Champloo. You gotta watch. I told you, you gotta watch that shit. Yeah. And the soundtrack is amazing. Soundtrack. Yeah, the uh, the, the <sighs> I'm gonna say the the group wrong. Uh, not the Jubies, but I was like, um, fuck, what's that fucking group? But like, they produced the soundtrack. Oh, um, really? I forgot the. I'll tell you out the podcast, but uh-huh. I forgot their name. But I know. I feel like Riz has done some work with Shemar Chaplu. Um, interesting. Jay Dilla New, did a couple of tracks. I yeah, believe. New Jabees. New Jabees. New Jabees. Oh, okay. I've New actually Jibis. heard. It. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's who it is. Them. Yes. Yeah. Fire. It's fire. Um, where was he at? Um, Shout out to all the cartoon and anime watchers. Shout out to all of them. I'm gonna go to Comic Con one day. That part. They have it up by where I where I um, live in at. Upstate? Oh, oh where? Yeah, it's in um Saratoga. I think they I have the Comic Con. Mm-hmm. I think next year, this year, because um, 'cause I've been getting like um ads about it, there's gonna be in Brooklyn. Oh really? I believe. I believe. I could be wrong. Is it a Comic Con or some other anime convention? Um, but I was thinking about going, uh, with Solange to Comic Con. But 
I have to dress in a costume, and I kind of be judging people that be wearing you those. You dressed in an anime costume in hol- on Halloween. That's, what you mean? But I know, I know. But Solange made me. <laughs> Solange made me. <laughs> but it was my favorite anime character, so like I understood why people get so invested. I was like, okay, I gotta stop calling these people. Because <laughs> How you? I like actually a, had fun. You're like, a big ass anime. Like, I, no, I'm a stand, big though, anime so nerd. Why would that like, be like weird to you? I, that's that, that's too much for you. I don't like cosplaying. Way. I do to a certain extent. Okay. So I guess that's an ick of mine, but I'm a phony because I just <laughs> was cosplaying for Halloween. So I'm a phony. So I don't know if that's really ick. Um, like, that's funny. you know what it is? It's like when they get into character, I think that's when I get kind of icked about. <laughs> yeah, that would be it's a little like, too much right, You do it a little bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're not going to Kamehameha? Kamehameha. <laughs> <laughs> If I was when I'm younger, I would definitely all that. I go Super Saiyan, all that shit. I'd just clean my room, going Super Saiyan, bro. That was my shit, bro. But um, yeah. Now nah, you, you know what? We should do that. Let's go to Cover Car. Let's make it that a double date. That would be mad, yo. <laughs> I feel like that crowd would definitely give me a little. Let's mad. Let's make it a double date, bro. Let's do it, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. That's not my vibe. I dog. feel like Sin and Solange are gonna get so into it. Me and you gonna be like. What the fuck is going that's, on? That's that's too much for me. Like, nah, too much? that's not my vibe, bro. But I respect like, kind of, I, I respect all of that, but I'm, that's not my vibe, bro. I feel you. I feel you. I like to talk about friendships on the podcast, um, because I know a lot of podcasts talks about relationships, but like, I kind of like to deep dive on friendships because mm-hmm. friendships are just as complex as relationships. So, I know I'm, Karan's probably gonna say no, but I feel like a lot of people don't speak for me. You don't know. <laughs> I feel like, okay, have y'all ever been through or have y'all ever played any mind games in relationships? Been through or played any mind games in relationships? I hate when you ask questions like this because you know damn well everybody done did that. Have you? (laughs) (laughs) Damn. So if the answer is yes, have you guys ever tried to play mind games and friendships to test the strength of the friendship? You was kind of feeling wonky on the friend. Or maybe you just wanted to see where that friend really stand with you. Have you ever tried to play mind games? So, like, for me, to use as an example, I don't play mind games, Mm -hmm. but (laughs) I don't play mind games. With my friends, I like to test them sometimes. So, like, there's been times when I played mind games with my with my boys, and I would, because there's times where I don't like to show up to a lot of friends, like, we have a lot of hangouts, mm-hmm. and I never like to really show up to a lot of friends' hangouts. Are so, you the mysterious friend? Yeah, <laughs> but not yeah. as Karan now. Karan don't be showing up anymore, but, um. Adult life. <laughs> so, Word. I used to, like, kind of test them, see, like, like, how bad do y'all really want me to be there? Because I didn't really, <laughs> like, I want to see how bad y'all want me to be there. So I be, like, saying some stuff like, um, nah, I'm not going to go. Like, I got to chill with shorty. Or, like, you know, I'm not really feeling, like, because I'll cause be, like, what, what we about to do? Just stand around drink and all that. Like, what else are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Are we going out? Blah, blah, blah. And you wasn't around for this. But um, I would get kind of feedback from my friends that were still around, like, upstate. And they would, like, sometimes call me or, mm-hmm. like, have me, like, you know, make an effort to try to get me outside. And that kind of make me feel good. I guess it's, like, kind of manipulation, also mind games, because, like, I kind of want to see, like, how how much do you value me as a friend for real? And it's fucked up. Wait, are you? Are I don't you? know. It sounds more like you, it sounds like you need some external validation of, your, of your <laughs> presence. <laughs> really? Yo, Dawson, you be showing your ass yeah. on the podcast, yo. <laughs> No, nah, that's it's, and not even on no weird shit. It just, yeah, yeah. it just that's it sounds like you may need that external validation. Like, am, yeah. and if I'm wrong, you can you can cut no, it. No, but no, it no, just no. it sounds like damn. I just want to make sure I'm valuable, that see or seen as valued in my friendships, which is fine because right. we need that. And it just that's what it just sounds like. You need some so external validation. You wouldn't call that playing mind games. I mean, Are you I feel doing like it? you're. You, it's more of a mind game for you in yeah, a sense. <laughs> Okay. Are you doing it like like it's like where you want to go, but you just want to see the reaction, or is like you just don't want to go? Oh, regardless, you just yeah. want to see the reaction if you go or not. Both cases, but 
I see because it's a little sick it's if you cases. it's a little sick if you want to go, but you like nah, let me lay back just to see if they go ask me. And then I'm gonna pull just up. Missing out, That's give sick, Dante. For no reason. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm fighting you if you do some shit like that. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's kind of both cases. I'm not even gonna hold you. I don't do it anymore, but like I definitely used to do it. See, um. <laughs> I guess to kind of answer this question or piggyback off where you're at, yeah. um, I don't necessarily, I know, I don't play mind games with my friends because people telling themselves. Facts. And I also am not about to invest that m- much energy into you in the sense of like the value of our friendship. And I also have grown to be like, listen, with my friends, um, if it ever is any anything weird or anything like that, I tr- I trust or I would hope that I can trust my friends and the people around me enough that they're emotionally mature and in the sense that they would come to me mm-hmm. like, hey, this is what it is. Mm. But you would hope that. You would hope that. Yeah. But I don't. Uh, like I said, people more or less tell on themselves. And you don't really got to worry about playing mind games. But right. uh, on a rule like a. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of be like, I don't need to feel need to do that shit because, like you say, you're telling yourself type shit. Or, like, the universe will just apply the evidence for me. Like, I don't really need to mm, do that. That'd be a listen. What's done in the dark to come to the light. That's always a thing. That you is a fact. You ain't lying. Don't ask me. I don't do that shit. <laughs> I mean, friendships. Nah, I don't play mind games. I'm like, I don't, you know me. I'm not the type of, I'm not a game <laughs> playing kind of, kind of dude, dog. Um, Have you done it in, uh, relationships oh younger me yeah i mean uh, mind tricks it's a little mind games like you know a little yeah, frog i, I, I could have been i was a little i could have been a little, I, I had some grimy some grimy moments in my younger days for sure i definitely had some grimy moments mm-hmm. that sold me though i don't i don't like to acknowledge uh, no it's okay to acknowledge that i was a little grimy when, at times yeah i played mind games for sure do you mm. think for I'm sure s- I'm sorry. Um, oh, come on, man. We was... Not no, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we was actually... No, we wasn't like wild. No, I played mind games, so I know I was wild. <laughs> I was wild. I was wild. I was a little wild back then. Oh, my God. I played God. mind games, but it was more... I think it's more what you said. It's like a more of a validation thing because I have tr- massive trust issues. That's fair. Massive trust issues. So, like, I don't really believe... If a shorty really is really feeling me, I like to test it. Or my friends, if that's really my friend. Oh like yeah, it. and that kind of like, yeah, for sure. I, I have I, feel that. I have trust issues with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I definitely used to play mind games to not a fault, but like, because usually if the vibes is vibing, I don't gotta do shit. Like, yeah, that shit just feels genuine. I fuck with it. But like, if something happened, kind of not forcefully, but it was like, this is weird. How mm-hmm. is this happening? I need to kind of test the words. Like, okay, let me like play a little something with you because like she's not adding up like Mm. why is this why is this going this way like it can go smoothly it can go rocky i just like i just need to know i'm definitely i'm I'm definitely curiosity kill the cat i'm definitely that cat like i need to figure out what's going on and it sometimes kills me in the end do you ever just ask like hey (laughs) what is this i have and Mm. people lie that's true so People lie, or they might really be telling me the truth, but I have a hard time believing it. Mm. You have trust issues, Don. I have mm-hmm. massive trust issues. Yeah. So, I think that's why I used to play mind games a lot because it definitely. I guess that's insecurity too, because like I don't know if I really trust them to give them all of who I am type of deal. I guess. Mm. So. I feel like women used to get mad at me because I'm the type to not saying I'm like I'm, I am a very nonchalant type of person, but right. I'm the type to like I just wouldn't care. Like I mean, I just I'm I'm the like, so you have, I, like I don't care about like of course like I'm a conversationalist and like I like conversing and doing all that stuff, but like I'm more of just an action type of person. Like mm. I don't like different like talk. Like I don't like. Of course, you could talk to me about what you want to do, what you plan on doing, but I just like to see you do it. Like, if you care about me, show me. Like, if you love me, show me. Like, like I don't like all that talking. Like, should talk about your I felt actions. That. So you don't like when people be talking about, oh, I can do this, that, and that. Yeah, but then just when fucking do it. This shit comes up. You're like, they don't do shit. Yeah, you know. It's always in the actions. Yeah, 
I agree. Okay, so it's just me that's fucked up. I understand. <laughs> No, uh, we you're not fuck- fucked up. It's okay. You've been through things. Yeah, I appreciate that. We I all got traumas. That. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And this, that's what makes us us. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? We're all just trying to grow. And What's sometimes in different relationships, they bring those things that we thought were healed to the forefront again. So That's a fact. Like you said, Karan, we're all the work, work in progress. progress. All work in that progress. Part. Damn, I was a little scandalous when I was young. You got me reflecting <laughs> on my younger days. I was kind of scandalous, <laughs> yo. I'm happy I, we all grow. We're we all work in progress for sure. For sure. You ever just like reflect on your old self and be like, damn, I came a long way. Yeah. Oh, yep. Oh, D. Damn, man. I also reflect and hope like certain things not come to light, but it's like I don't want to have that revisited. For sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like, oh, man, that was a bad time. Like, I don't want that to be brought up again. Or mm-hmm. like, yeah. I go through that same type of situation again. Like, that will fuck me up. Not fuck me up, but like, uh, Cause that was a rough time even getting out of that. Now to go through it again, mm. yeah. it's like, oh shit, I don't want that shit. I do not want that shit. Yeah, and this was, and that's why, like, sometimes when you don't see me, when you see me, like, not like in the when I'm in the cut, not answering, and you say right. I'm just working, cause it's like shit like that. Like I'd be like, I, I, and at times I know it can be a little unhealthy when you're just obsessive with like trying to improve, but uh-huh. like. I be thinking that way, yo. Like, I be like, damn, I never want to go back to like certain things or like certain feelings. So I'm like trying to overcompensate, compensate for like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So no, nah, I feel you on that, man. I definitely feel you. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Oh, uh, look at us getting deep. It's like right, our therapy, yeah, man. Deep. We're getting deep. Vulnerable. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Oh, a little gosh. something, a little something, a little something. Um, what y'all want to talk about? We talking about um, y'all didn't listen to any. New music lately? Yes. Any new good new music? Shout out to Larry June and Cardo. They dropped the album. Mm-hmm. Dropped the album. Shout uh, out. Oh, this has been a lot of good music. Shout out to facts. Well, I mean, we haven't potted in so long, so I mean, we. Yeah, there's this a been lot so of music. within a month. There's been a lot of shit. Of course, Brent that we played in the intro. Mm-hmm. Brent shit is fire. Georgia Smith had dropped the album too. I really didn't good. hear her shit. How was it? It was I pretty good. It. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. I like it. A lot of people said it was a little too slow. Nah, it was kind of up. Was it up tempo? I feel like it gave a lot of up tempo. Oh, no, was that snow? Well, who was it? Oh, maybe not George nah, Smith. Nah, Snow didn't drop an album. Okay, no. um, okay, maybe not George Smith. Nah, George Smith was very. She was getting a lot of like good? not Afro vibes, but it was very like like a like lot up of up tempo. It was up tempo. Okay, yeah, yeah. a lot of up tempo stuff. Um, Damn, who was dropped? If y'all had to pick an, uh, I know it's early, but if y'all had to pick an album of the year for right now, for 2023, what would it be? Album of the year? Yeah, for right now. I know it's still, we still got some time left. Like, what's an album that you go back to from this year and it's like, wow. I can name some for y'all if y'all need some. Hold on, I gotta, yeah, gotta I mean, look. shit, this, I, I listen to Mick Jenkins' album. I listen to Diddy's album. I know there's a lot of shit going on with him. <laughs> um, I've, just some shit on the Drake album. Um, I mean, I'd be listening to a lot of West Coast shit. Shout out Larry June. Um, Somebody dropped the album this year. That's all right. I fuck with Nas' uh, Magic 3. I liked Cash Cobain's album that he dropped. Who? Cash Cobain. Cash Cobain. Dante's about to Um, Triplin had a really good album that he dropped. Okay. That was good. Um, I, I fuck with the Beano and Blast shit. I think it was up on that. Pretty Girls Love Slizzly? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, who else? Who else, man? It's just... it has been a lot of music I dropped this year. Underground shit. So, yeah, like, I be, I'm trying to think of, like, like popular shit. Um, Sideshow dropped a good album. These are a lot of the artists that I'm naming, too, are also still um, very... Uh, up and coming and underground, yeah. Shout but to still mu- mu- very much worth Good. it. Um, Marco Plus okay. dropped the album. Okay, Good, like great, like they there's a lot of great. It's a lot of good music. Is, is it hard for you to like go back to just like a lot of mainstream music after hearing a lot of like dope underground type music? Like, and you like kind of don't hear this similarities, like because underground people really be putting their foot they in do. their music. Yeah. And then you hear mainstream, like, oh, this is kind of lackadaisical. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm a SoundCloud girly, and that's oh, what oh, that's oh that's yeah. where like. Yeah. You know, a lot of my love for the music, and I feel like that's like shaped my character as a person. Uh-huh. This was a SoundCloud, and for still sure. SoundCloud to this day. Yeah, I'm still facts. an active member, part of it. So, and that <clears throat> I don't know that space and that 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 
part of uh, artist life when they're in that era and they're going hard and the music just be hitting a little different. Yeah, a little for different. sure. I totally agree. More of a hunger. It. Yeah. Yeah. And there's still SoundCloud songs I go back to from like 2014, 15. Now I'm like, this shit's still crank. <laughs> That's a <laughs> and fact. Do. SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud was amazing, bro. I still be on, like, on the daily, I be on SoundCloud. Like, yeah. well, Jordan Ward also dropped a really good yeah, album. Jordan, Jordan yeah. Ward. Oh, yeah. 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 That album was really good. Love it. There's been a love lot it. of people that's been dropped. Yeah. Man. Which is great. Yeah. I good. love that. I actually really love that because it was a point in time where I feel like nothing <laughs> was dropping. Yeah, it's been it a minute. Dropping. I feel like during COVID, there was a time during COVID where everything just stopped. Like, yeah. People weren't coming out with music and mm-hmm. like, it was weird. Yeah. I don't know, but I feel like nowadays a lot of music has been very like like I listen to Travis Scott's album. Mad like oh it's just okay. A lot of music yeah, just be okay. It's just be okay. Like you don't really hear a lot of like you can tell like these niggas haven't experienced anything or they just but that's mainstream. Not burnt though, out, man. but they just like it's hard to come up with not hard to come up, but like I'm trying to think of the word because like I hear underground artists and they're making probably like thirteen track songs, maybe twelve track, ten songs, and like but I'm not even talking about the quantity of music. I'm talking about the quality. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it'll be a few number of songs, not a lot of songs. That you go and back to. It'll be like, you might find two, three, four songs on right. like a 20-track album. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I just feel like... Yeah, replay value and some of the mainstream stuff is... Slacking. Is slacking. Lacking. But there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot outside of that. There's a lot of dope artists that are dropping, like, some really good artists. Some dope ones. Yes, and shout out to SoundCloud because I still be I, I listen to a bunch of like ra- uh, radio shows on SoundCloud mm-hmm. that be putting me on. And of they course, still have radio shows on there. Yeah. What? This, no, uh, I don't know. There's I'm, too I'm many. There's too many. I mean, there's Mad Underground one, and there's like popular ones too. Mm-hmm. I know people like listen to like Joe K and like Selection and shit. Yeah, Selection. Those Selection. that's still like a good like. I used to listen to OVOs when they had OVO one. Radio yeah. and yeah. shit. Um. Yeah, there's so many good shout out. Uh, Earl Sweatshirt actually has a really good radio show. Mm-hmm. He does every month on uh, Red Bull Radio and SoundCloud. Uh, a lot of different producers. Like, it just, uh, like, people will be surprised. Like, it just depends on, like, what sound you like. A mm-hmm. lot of times, like, a lot of their favorite, like, producers be having, like, random playlists or r- radio shows that they might not know about. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways to, like, get new music if people, like, want to find new shit yeah, and research and now you know with tiktok it's super easy people are like doing it for you so yeah. it's like it's literally what say like dropping this so you don't have to go look for it right for here sure. so a lot of music like that too that the fuck i'll be on twitter finding new music too i like every friday because like people, usually people drop music every on fridays friday. mm-hmm. i look up new music fridays and mm-hmm. i just yep. i just search up random shit you know you find a lot of stuff find a lot of shit yeah. i totally agree i've been listening to a lot of um yves tumor <laughs> Who? Your best tumor. Lay best tumor. I'm putting not me on right now. Yeah, you putting this song because yeah. we not here. Um, we. Uh, <laughs> I probably say spelling his name wrong. Oh, yeah. How you spell it? Your best tumor. Why Oh, Why? I like their music. Okay. It's um yeah. Interesting. Not hip hop, but a different take on stuff. It's very, it's vibey. Um, you putting this on This is why I fuck with DJs Cause yeah. they be having a good Like shit yeah. This is just something That I just listen to Okay Okay Has a Not mixture of like rock <laughs> Different type of things Yeah Okay okay I listen to all types of music I fuck, fuck with I it I had a question Damn it It just went It just went It just passed me Fuck um, Oh yeah and Bash I feel like I forgot I should shop Bash out Bash? Bash World of the World Yeah Okay I feel so old Cause I'm like Who, who are these people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like bad age Wow. <laughs> so, so what do you have planned for um 2024 any plans any goals you wrote down um well first i th- before this year and i definitely want to reflect on everything that i've done this past year because it's like i said this year was very transitional but a lot of great things have gotten done um that i feel like are prepping for the new year so i'm excited about that um i've always got something on the back burner going up so right. i ain't gonna talk too much about Come it but okay. um if anything, it's just really to expand on what I, what I already have started now. So it's really mm-hmm. take it to the next level. Um, you know, discover different ways to create, collab more, expand more, see where things can be um, elevated, with bringing more you know opportunity for the people around and the communities too. So like, there's a lot of things that I'm thinking about and working on and stuff. So I'm excited to see where where this new year takes me. 
and all these new experiences I'm going to get to see that's upcoming. So I'm excited. For sure. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious about 2024. I don't know why yet. So yeah, I'm anxious, kinda, really? Yeah, yeah, just a little anxious. I don't know why yet. Mm. I feel like it's a lot of unknown, but also I feel like there's a lot of like, I feel like a lot of like good is going to come yeah. in 2024. I just don't know what it is yet. And I'm just very anxious. Like, oh, I want to know what it is. Like, what's going to like happen? It's like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting that good feeling about 2024. Maybe because Kobe year, but like, I don't know. I'm just getting a good feeling. Are y'all it. like really deep planners? Are are y'all like the type of people that have to plan on everything or you're like go with the flow? It's a mixture of go with the flow and a combination of like I've I started doing this new thing with like planning stuff out quarterly, which quarterly. seems oh. to work. Okay. It's, I'm like, oh, okay, that's kinda cool. It's a different way to look at stuff. But mm-hmm. um yeah, I'm just like I'm very open to different things, things coming in. Because, like I said, sometimes, especially as a creative, you get hit with some random stuff, day of, mm. night of, things like that. So, okay. being open to yeah, open to that. I'm not really a planner like that. I think I'm very go with, I'm very go with the flow. Okay. Like, I'll plan things that I have in mind, and I'll, like, plan it out. But as far as, like, the future or, like, projects, I don't really plan it out like that. Really? Okay. Like, I kind of just let things flow. I'll plan a little, a little bit, and then whatever happens, happens. Because then I'll get too fixated, and I'll get too con- too controlling and possessive. Yeah. I want to yeah. control every aspect, and it won't come out the way I want it to go come out. Mm-hmm. So I'll just be like, yeah, let's just let, let's just let the magic Keep happen. Keep planning and making tweaks to it. Yeah. Because re- I'm never satisfied. Reviving. Exactly. Never satisfied. Like, I always think that things could be more perfect. I feel that. So I'd rather just let it. Once I'm done with something, I just, I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. And I just don't touch it ever again. Interesting. Okay. What about you? Oh no, I'm I, I'm trying to work on it, but I I plan things to the T, yo. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a like from a I'm a like time even from like the time like I'm the type to like I have to get to certain places on like everything just has to be very punctual and like I just things have to get done like right on time or like it just lingers in the back it just it's in the back of my mind and like it's hard for me to like do other shit when mm-hmm. like things aren't being done but it's hard because like it'd be hard to live life like that you know like a little bit because you get of course like life be life and everything can't happen right on like plan timing and plan schedules so mm-hmm. um yeah it'd be hard because like i'd be really trying to plan everything to the t bro mm-hmm. like everything like i got shit like i know literally every single week for like the next almost like three four months i know what i'm doing bro like so how do you react when things don't go according to your plan it's hard bro because i'm like do you like break down and just like stop everything and you're done for the day nah fuck no shit shit gotta always continue but it definitely like it it makes me upset like Mm -hmm. i'm trying like to be just more calm and not be upset with shit but yeah bro i'm like i'd be on top of shit bro (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll be on top of shit, man. Oh, man. But it's hard. Like, I don't know. I don't like living like this because, like, at times, bro, like, <sighs> yeah, yo, it, it's hard because. You feel like, like bad anxiety? I can't shit? even, like, sleep at times. Like, I'm the type, but it's not, but I feel good about it. Like, I just be mad excited about shit. So, like, I plan everything and, like, I feel it at times, like, even on my health, you know? But it mm, doesn't. But good. it doesn't feel like it because it feels. It doesn't feel good. bad though. Like it's always good. But at times I just be feeling tired and I'd be like, damn, because I'm like not resting and shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's important to rest. Bro. Very important. Listen, if you're not right, nothing's going to right. Yeah, it's bro, so that's important. not good. That's not healthy. Bro. I know, man. Uh, I know. That's not healthy. Yeah, no. But I, I have to plan stuff, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to like back off of that. But like I told you last time, I'm, I'm always in like survival mode, and, like. That's always like my mindset. Like I got it. it's like fight or flight every day. I have, I have a question. Last question, and then we can. And then my apologies. How <laughs> how much how much do you guys compromise your selfishness? Are we Taurus? We don't come on. We sell. We the selfish like most selfish. I guess that's sign there is. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm asking you guys because I and stubborn been put in. <laughs> Damn, I'm exposing shit. Um, Expose it. That's, no, 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 come no, no, on. No. That's your life. Come uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I've been going through trials where I've been having to debate if I want to compromise my selfishness mm-hmm. in order to stabilize something. 
mm-hmm. or should I allow my, or should I still be selfish for the sake of my own sanity? But I understand in certain relationships, there's a give and take. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you might have to just bite the bullet for the sake of the other person or the relationship as a whole, friendship or relationship, whatever the case may be. And I am debating that right now for myself because I'm struggling where if I do I really want to do this or should I just say fuck it and just make sure I'm straight because pretty much majority of my life I've been selfish. Like I just make sure I'm good. Mm-hmm. And like I won't put myself in uncomfortable predicaments for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like I'm very self-orientated. Like mm-hmm. I don't care what's going on in the world. Like if I'm not going to be okay, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Like or I'm not going to go to somewhere to make somebody else happy. That's just not me. So like how do you guys feel about compromising your selfishness in certain aspects? Um <clears throat> I don't know, that one's a tough one because it can it can depend on a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. But um I know if if like I'm I'm still a true believer that like if I'm not if I'm not good, you know, I can't, you know, there's not much that I I'm not going to be a benefit for anything or anybody if I don't if I'm not right mentally or physically. And sometimes that looks like taking that time, and it may be selfish. To, to, it may seem as selfish from the out, from an outside perspective, but mm-hmm. if I have to um, do these things to make sure that you know I'm stable and I'm, my mental health is good, then I have to do that. Yeah. And I think people pleasing is something that a lot of people are dealing with, and that's not always a good thing. Right. Um, but I don't know. I guess with that, every relationship is different. There's compromise, and it's it's like a it's a choice thing too. So, depending on what type of relationship it is with said person or situation, you got to make those decisions right then and there. Right. It gets complicated, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like there should be a comp? Do you feel like people should compromise their s- selfishness on both sides of the spectrum or should people still be allowed to do not do what they want but like i mean i feel like whatever kind of makes you sleep better at night and like i said it's more of a personality thing because like some people might feel bad for like being selfish you know what i'm saying like that Mm -hmm. might eat at you at night because you're like fuck like i'm being selfish (laughs) or some people might need that so like i know for me personally like i'm a uh, I'm a pretty selfish person, like, as far as, like, I put myself for sure before anything, but, yeah, yeah. like, that's what I need to do. Like, I'm a pretty, like, introspective and, like, deep, like, I will be in my mind all day, every day, mm-hmm. so, like, I need to always make sure that, like, I need to protect my mental before anything else to mm-hmm. even help other people and make sure I can, you know, you, you have to be there for yourself. You have to make yeah, sure, you like, you're to. good. So, like, no, you have to be like it's like they always say like and uh when you take a flight when they say if the oxygen mask comes down you yeah. have to put it on yourself first mm-hmm. before you like help your the neighbor or somebody next to you like right it, you can't if you if you're not helping yourself you can't help nobody no, else it's, like that's a fact you can't be your best self for other people if you're not mm-hmm. thinking about yourself first so no i'm i'm a strong believer in like no you come before anything like mm-hmm. Because at the, at the end of the day, all you have is yourself. Everybody, like, yes, we we should be a community and we should, like, and no, and I'm a strong believer in, like, considering, like, everybody and everything around me. Right. I'm not the type to just, like, be so selfish to where, like, I'm, I, I want the worst for other people. Like, I want the best for other people as well. But, right. like, in order to, like, everybody should have to, like, of course, think about yourself first, but. I don't know. It's like mm-hmm. there's of course a balance. There needs to be a balance of that shit because you can't be all about just yourself at times. I've seen what is, and I agree with you, with your point because I've seen what it's like to not put yourself um, first and to constantly um, try to compromise yourself for someone else, People, yeah. and that's not always a good thing because 
Well, it's, it's usually never a good thing because half of the time, majority of the time, you're taking all the energy that you can be using yourself, feeding it into someone else. And if you're not getting that reciprocated back to you, shit going to eat you up. It's going to leave you, leave you jaded. Yeah. It's going to leave you, it's going to leave you like physically. Jaded like, like a and, yeah. So that's like, when, that's the word swimming. Yeah, it's not like jaded. reciprocated back yeah. to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it, 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 you find yourself constantly, your attention on a whole bunch of things that it doesn't need to. Like, you know, wherever your attention goes, that's what's going to grow and manifest. So, yeah. right. Um, I'm a big believer in making sure that you are taking care of yourself fully, overflow your cup, so that way when you are to give to someone else, it's not ta- it's not really like taken that. from you, you know? I like that. I like so, that. Overflow your cup. I have a question, it. a quick question for y'all. Um, since we're kind of coming down to, like, the end of the year, what's something that y'all, the main thing y'all want to improve on for the next year? And it could be any. Like, it doesn't have to be super deep. It can be super deep, but what's just something y'all want to improve on? About yourself, hmm. or even like a, it could be a hobby or craft that y'all just want to improve on. Or, um, I know one for sure is consistency. Mm, okay, agreed. Um, okay, so consistency is something that I, I think I've grown to be a little bit better at it. Back in there's there's more room for growth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, consistency. Okay. Um, I can definitely relate to that. Um, <laughs> um, you don't have to be super deep. No, nah, it's not super deep. I'm just trying to think if it's really uh, something I need to improve on. Or I'm just are you just perfect at it already? Yeah, I don't want to. I think me being more. Discipline. I guess that goes with consistency, mm-hmm. but discipline, okay. like more discipline. It's in the same family. Because I will start a lot of stuff, but like I don't discipline myself into actually doing it. Mm. Mm. Like that. I'm a type of person, it needs to be done on perfect conditions. Mm. Like I won't do something if like I didn't get a good night's sleep or I got home late or I didn't eat before I, I can go to the gym. Like, if none, if some stuff don't happen, I'm not gonna do it. Mm. And like, I don't think that's, I don't think that's always good. I feel like I need to persevere mm-hmm. and like push through uncomfortable conditions sometimes to do what I gotta do. So like, one thing about me is like going back to the gym. Like I used to go to the gym daily, like all the time, like six days a week. Mm-hmm. Like I was always at the gym. Once I reached my my goal, I just kind of fell through and I just stopped doing it. Right. Like oh, I got it here. I'm good now. I can just go when I want to. Right. And now I'm like, damn, I was, like, really happy when I was, like, in the gym and, like, healthy and shit. I'm not saying I'm not healthy anymore, but, like, mm. I want to go back to that side of me where, like, I was always in the gym. Mm-hmm. I was con- comf- I was comfortable with my body, and I was, like, because the gym gave me a peace of mind. Like, mm-hmm. I was just able to release any type of anger, stress, or, like, just overthinking thoughts. When I'm in the gym, I think about nothing but just working out. Mm-hmm. I'm just running mm-hmm. this shit. Okay. So I think I want to be more disciplined in that regard because, and even with podcasts, I just listen to podcasts all the time. I don't listen to podcasts anymore, and I mm-hmm. fucking hate that for myself. Okay. So I want to get back to that. So I guess discipline. Okay. I I'm going to be that. more disciplined in 2024. I got to grow into that. I can respect that. Okay. What about you? Uh, For me... Probably I want to, well, I definitely want to take more, I, I want to like learn new stuff, like just random new stuff. I, I want to take time to like set aside time from like working because like, like I'm the type that like I'm so consumed and just like working and shit. I want to take time to just like learn anything new that I'm not good at, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know. And I don't know what it is, but that'd be good for just you. a new hobby. Like, I just want to find a new hobby that I know nothing about and just start from scratch. You better about doing a uh, pottery, you know, like with the oh, yeah, like, clay. <laughs> yes, I actually do want to get into to like I've always wanted to do like that, that, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that <laughs> actually dope. sounds dope. No, I would do sure. that. <laughs> I would dope, definitely bro. do that. It gets messy, I heard, but that shit looks mad mm-hmm. fun. I yeah. always see that shit. I, I want to travel more too. Travel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Last time you've been on vacation. Where are we? 2023. Yeah. Like out the country? Out the country, different states. Right, Sandy. Um, oh, that wasn't a vacation. I wouldn't consider that that one. Was the last time I've been on vacation was like 2021, 20, maybe. No, I'm lying. I went to my M- Miami 
like a year or two ago. Years okay. Ago. Yeah. Was it like business or like? It was a uh, birthday type shit. Okay. Like so a little vacation. Well, and but prior to that, I went to Puerto Rico, but I wanted. I just want to see the world more. There's so much. The world is so big. big bro, I just want to see. I want to see more of it and experience more. Right. Just make more more experiences for myself. I, shit like I that. totally agree. I have, a, I have I have a question for y'all. Sure. Um, so, as creatives, how important is it's like a two in one question. So, as creatives, how important is it to um, experience life and also do nothing? The first part, definitely very important. Like, I, as a creative, I feel like to even create anything, like, to create anything, you have to, like, experience something. Like, I mean, every, everybody, I mean, that will, I don't know. That, that's a good question. That's actually a really good question. That's a great question. I mean, good, like, experience something, like, traumatizing, or because uh, you can experience something just good in life and mm-hmm. still, I guess, maybe create, but. Yeah, you definitely have to experience life and, like, have some type of experience, mm-hmm. like, and everybody is, like, experience is different. So, like, that's the great thing about being a creative because, like, everybody's creation or thought or everything is different because nobody's the same. Like, not exactly. one person is the same. So, like, everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different mind, you mm-hmm. know? So, what I think about that's doing part. nothing? See, I mean, that's the part. I, like, it's hard for me to answer because I struggle with that. Like, I'm the type. I'm never not doing anything. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, I'm the type. Well, my doing nothing is I wake up stupid early. Like, I wake up at five from my five to six. Well, really, like five to five forty five is like the my time to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, I well, that's really the time where I like I wake up. I'll smoke. I'll like listen to new music or podcasts. And then I'll get my day started at, like, 5, 45, 6. Yeah. And then I'm usually asleep by, like, 10, 10, 30. But, like, it's hard for me not to do nothing because mm-hmm. I'm always on 100. Like, I'm always, like, in fight or flight mode or survival mode. Like, oh, I got to be doing something. I got to be making money. I got to be building on my craft, like, mm-hmm. 24-7. So, no, I'm, try- I'm really trying to work on, like, not doing nothing. That's why I'm, like, trying to, like come up with new hobbies to that i know nothing about just to like yeah but that's not doing nothing it. though like that's still doing something so you know i struggle with that just not doing nothing mm. that's why i can't i can't take vacations do you read oh yes I, you well I, I i um i take public transportation a lot mm-hmm. so like i I'm, i take books with me everywhere and yeah. shit so yeah no i definitely read a lot that's me, just throughout the day on like trains and buses and stuff Right. Yeah, it's cool. my book collection right there. But <laughs> wow, yeah, that's sorry. a nice collection. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still working on it. <laughs> um, it's, it's important to experience life. Um, I feel like when it comes to any type of work of art, like painting, DJing, um, podcasting, writing. dancing, writing, you need to experience life because, mm-hmm. like. Where does your foundation come from to create without experience life? Right. Like you need to, even if it's just like going down, walk in a park or just walk on your block, like just looking around, seeing what someone's doing on the stoop, just talking on the phone, seeing exactly. what someone buying ice cream, little kids running around, like just that experience alone can just get your mind stimulated and just come up with mm-hmm. different ideas. Do you think people have to have like a traumatic experience to nah, create something? Not at all. Good. Not at all. Not to me anyways. I feel like, I feel like for me, like, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast if I didn't, like, go out and do anything. Like, mm-hmm. even though I'm I'm such a big proponent of doing nothing, mm-hmm. I think that's important. That's an art You're to do nothing. You're that, like, <laughs> just doing nothing, right? Just doing nothing. I feel like a lot of creatives don't know how to do nothing. Yeah. So, like, when the time actually comes, they just go crazy. Like, they don't mm-hmm. really know how to sit alone with their thoughts yeah. and sit alone with like unfinished projects or like sit a, like you sit in your house you're not booked and you're doing nothing and you're seeing where your art got you in life and now you're actually looking at it for the first time mm-hmm. and processing everything and now you're just like fuck i gotta keep going but mm-hmm. you can't keep going because this time period in your life requires you to do nothing. So now you're just scrambling. I don't know. You could just, like, I but, feel like people just don't know how to just sit down and just, because you're right. Like, reading a book or, like, watching TV, is it is doing something, 
But when I hear doing nothing, it's you're like your mind is still like working, like by watch by doing stuff like you're that. You're right. I mean, really doing nothing would be like meditation, where you're just literally sitting in silence. And but that's a good thing. But that's, that's still that's something a really healthy technically. Thing to do. Like meditation is still something technically. You're like no, it's not. I mean, I mean, it's the art of like easing your mind or relaxing, and releasing your chakras and stuff like that. That's something. Your body feels something in that regard. Well, well, in, the, well in that case, your body's always gonna feel something, even when you sleep. You like your body's still working, right? So, like, so that's why. But when I hear like, no, dude, they got mad technical. Yeah, you got mad technical with it. No, nigga, no. the meditation and shit is not doing. That's doing okay. nothing. Okay, okay, okay. That's doing nothing. Okay, okay. In a good way though, like. So it's when, a healthy way of doing nothing. When I hear do nothing, I feel like you it's... like play video games. No, no, no. Relax. Like doing nothing that results into your art and what you love to do. Anything besides that, I think I would consider doing nothing. Because if I'm not... That's not anything that's not working on your craft or like... Yeah, focus on what you do for a living, what makes, what pays your bill, what you love to do. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing that, I feel like you're doing nothing. Right. Okay. So I feel like anything else... You're doing nothing. And I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. Like, even you said you struggle with that. Like, yeah. but you still do nothing. Like, And you say from 5 a.m. to 5.45, that's your time period of doing nothing. I mean, doing smoking, nothing is like just like. Of, yeah, exactly. Doing personal but stuff. But that's all like, you give yourself. That's all you give yourself is that 45 minutes. Once that's done, you're right back to going to the. working. Yeah. Working. You know what I'm saying? Like, um. If we was doing this podcast more frequently, I would definitely give myself like two days, three days. To oh, just like sit there and yeah, just, yeah, that would be hard. I think me. I would do that honestly. But I feel like true. Like, I feel like true. I feel like true. Like, like creative. I feel like true creatives and like true scholars. They're just always wanting to learn or like get better at something. Like I feel like it, it would almost impossible for them to not do nothing. Because like me, there's so many interests that like I always want to be like. I'm just genuinely interested about like. I also, but yeah, but then your brain is like a muscle, though. Like you need to rest your brain sometimes, because mm. when you feel burnt out, that's a strong feeling. Like being burnt out is not a fun feeling to feel. So I feel like doing I don't know. It just relaxes your brain, in my opinion. Like because your brain is always constantly moving. So I feel mm-hmm. like doing nothing really just helps balance out your life experiences, which is also important. So I feel like it's like a yin and yang. You need to have a healthy balance of both of them, in my opinion. It's that duality of life. So I agree. Yeah. In my humble opinion, um, yeah, I definitely struggle on that. I can't. I'm. I try to work on that. Actually, I don't try to work on that. Like, <laughs> no. I use that as an excuse. You don't. I use that as an excuse. Like I love that as an excuse. But I don't know. Like when you're doing something you really love, you like. I know for it me, feel like work. I, feel I I never want to stop doing it. Like right. I be saying, like this is shit I dream for. Like when I was young, like why would I want to stop doing it? Like I just always want to keep doing that shit. You know. But I don't know. That's me. Like I. I don't know. I don't know. What's your opinion on it? Yeah, like, what do you think? Um, so I think there's times where I felt like where I didn't know how to not do anything. And there's been moments where, like, the universe legit has, like, sat me down. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, like, like, I, like, like, I, like yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was doing too much mm. when in a time where I should have been. But I think, um, yes, it's just, like, that duality of life is the yin and yang. And in such that, like, you know, as above, so below. Yeah, I think I said that right. But within not doing nothing or those moments where you feel, like, bored or you may feel stagnant, like, nothing's happening, I think those are very precious times because I feel like that means that you are making space for something to come through and manifest mm-hmm. for you. And that's usually what happens because you get out of that moment of not doing anything after a while anyway. Yep. So okay. um, I feel like it's, again, it's always, I feel like it, for me it always goes back to the perspective and how I'm looking at things. So those, which I had to learn because when there was a point in time where I felt like I wasn't getting as many bookings and things like that, it was driving me crazy. I'm like, I'm like you know, bookings right now or like right. I'm not doing any showcases or anything. So like, what does this mean? And that was like time for me to like, I guess, like reflect and chill. And also that was and I guess in not doing nothing outside of the craft, it was time for me to like experience life in a different way. So mm-hmm. I had time to do nothing in a sense, which meant for me to just explore life without um, the pressures of like your craft, of trying of, to work of, on yeah. your craft and shit. Yeah, man. I don't know. I but just it, yeah. Go ahead. But is that doing nothing though? Like I, I, I feel what you're saying. No, I, I definitely feel what you're, what mm. you're saying. But at the end, but y'all are still doing. 
I feel like as like being living in America, like it's so hard. Like they make it hard for you to not do nothing. Like mm. even like our nothingness be like something. Like <laughs> like I know for me because I'm, I'm I'm Caribbean and African, but like I remember like having to go to like like to, I'm from Trinidadian. I happen to like go to like Trinidad for the summers and like when when you talk about doing nothing, like they're nothing be like laying on the beach, like right, like farming, like, yes. like or like just yeah. simple. Like it's such a simple lifestyle, and I'd be mm-hmm. like, wow, yeah. it's such a a different way of life. Exactly. So yeah. I feel like Americans are just, it's, all, it's like all the hustle and bustle. Like, mm-hmm. right. you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's hard not to do nothing, in my opinion. Right. I think it is important to um, to learn how to disconnect and unplug yeah. yourself yes. for a little bit. Yeah. Um, because health, it's, it, yeah. it starts to become easier to plug back in and yep. out and know when, yeah. like, g- getting recharged. that discernment from it. Yeah. Yep. So... Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you you define what your nothing is. Sure, you know what I'm saying. It's like mm-hmm. whatever you feel like you need to do to, to do nothing. That is your nothing. Mm-hmm. Like everybody has their own nothing. And so. don't feel guilty about it. Yeah, that's something I learned to like oh, not God. feel guilty about it. Like this life is as big as mystery. Don't feel guilty about giving yourself a couple of days yeah. to like. Yeah. I agree. Chill. Yeah. I I I, m- I bring this up too because I was talking with a young woman and she runs her business and very good at it. Very great. But she was when she was explaining to me, she is like, yeah, I'm I'm constantly working. I'm doing this, that, and the third. Boom, boom, boom. That has to do this every day. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um, she was asking about lenient time, and it, it made me think, like, damn, maybe I'm not doing enough. Blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, no, I know in which, and it can go, it can go back to personality. But I'm like, I know in which the way that I operate that works best for me, yes. and I know that it's not conducive for me to work like that yeah, like yeah that hard. and it took me a while because i was feeling very guilty like damn i'm not doing enough yeah. but i knew for myself that all right, i have to operate in this way maybe just for this period of my life that will get me to the next step but in th- right now in this chapter i gotta operate like this because it works the best out for me and yeah and to not compare lives right yeah, so. for sure that's a big yeah. one like Solange is a is a good example because Solange didn't know how to do nothing at all. Like you know, yeah, Solange, she's always, she's always out and about. She yeah. was always outside, always working doing classes, shit. working, teaching. Like she's doing now. Shout out to Solange. She was here earlier. Yeah. Solange, yeah, she, had she to was bounce. here earlier. And um, before we got together, like she didn't know how to do it. So when I got to not to like act like I taught her this, but like I was made a point like, yo, like you could chill, like you know, take mm-hmm. a. Have a mental health day, just like chill, mm-hmm. do nothing. And she, for the longest time, she couldn't really know what to do. Mm. Like she would go crazy sometimes, and like she'll like kind of overthink on certain scenarios instead of just like yo, just like chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like now she's like learned how to really chill, which is hers is just sleeping all day, maybe painting mm-hmm. and watching her shows or like going talking to her grandmother Mm -hmm. like it's the most simplest things and that's what she does to recharge yeah and i love that for her i'm glad she finally found that nothingness for her like what is nothing for you so i feel like a lot of artists need to find what nothing is Mm -hmm. and once in a while just do it yeah just once in a while just gotta do it because not everyone can do that like Rick Ross said that he barely he don't get like enough sleep or whatever he said about that. Yeah, exactly. Like he's like always having seizures and shit. Yeah, of, like he need, like rest is important and, and like crazy. you need to. Fifty Fifty Cent in his book, he was talking about how important sleep is. Bro, really so important. important. <laughs> and I know a lot of people that like to downplay sleep, but like oh, nah, I need to bro, work on my nah. sleep. I'm gonna lay down. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> lay. I'm gonna lay down. down. Yep. <laughs> real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love um, it. I'm I'm the time, I'd be sleeping like on my like the the, the train and the buses. Like I'm the time I'd be on the subway. Like yeah. <laughs> the body needs to rest. Do you take <laughs> naps on the subway and shit? <laughs> yeah. Nah, I need to work on my sleep. Man. You need to, bro. You but need yeah. to. I'm the type. That's I wake up. I'm the, I wake up stupid. Like I'm the type that I wake up throughout the night. Like I wake up like every like two. What time you go to bed? No early, time. I go to bed early. I go to bed like eleven, like eleven the latest. Well, that's not mm-hmm. early. That's like a normal time for us. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I go to bed around eleven. Early to me is like is like my pops. My pops are going to sleep like at seven seven thirty eight o'clock. Nah, I'm seven. Is, I get home at like eight, so yeah. I'd be going to bed like ten eleven. Got you. Got I'd you. be up at like five every day. Got you. Got and you. And I I get up like throughout the night and shit. My brain is always like it's hard to like turn it off, man. I'd be thinking too much about shit. I feel you. I'm trying to work on that though, just to like. Relax. You'll find your rhythm. Yeah, I'm man. Trying. I'm trying. But um, y'all got anything else y'all want to talk about? Any questions? Any topics? Corsay? 
Uh, no, I think it's been. I mean, shit. There's there's a lot going on in the world. But I don't even want to get into like current <laughs> current event shit. Yeah, yeah that's. I kind of. So no, I don't feel like uh, talking about yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. uh, <laughs> it's too late for that. Um, and the wine's starting to hit a little bit, so <laughs> getting a little sleepy. I don't drink, so yeah, you know, wine be hit like any type of alcohol be hitting me. That's a fact. I feel you. I'm old, man. But um, <laughs> you're funny. I'm old. Um, okay, so with that being said, this was episode. I, what episode is this? 195 Five. of the Soapbox. Oh, uh, I want to thank everybody that's on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Want to shout out to our special guest. Returning uh, guest. Returning guest. You know what I'm saying? Bouncing the game. Um, so, couple. For the last segment of the podcast, we usually allow our guests to like plug themselves in, like mm-hmm. put the audience know to anything they got going on, the socials, anything like that. So, if you would like to take the floor and yes. let people know what's going on, um, type shit. You can follow me. All my handles are the same. It's Jonesy dot Rum, um, J Zero N E S Y dot R U M. Um, mainly, I'm like I'm on Instagram. I'm on SoundCloud. You can hear a couple of my mixes um, there. Yeah, that's pretty much all I use. <laughs> I went. I went. Accidentally went viral on TikTok. Y'all can follow me on TikTok. Oh, word? Like, yeah, it was something stupid. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, this is what you go viral for. But all right. Nah, I gotta yeah, find you go out. Yeah, nah. Nah, you gotta it was that. literally like a cap cut template of this lady. She was like in the woods. She went to go unzip her pants and like she squat. And then when like as she squats, it's me. Like that's coming out of her pants. <laughs> oh, something nah, stupid. I'll find that. We gonna find that. <laughs> nah, that's funny. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, wow. That was. It was just like a whatever. But yeah. So yeah, those are my social medias. I'll be on there. Go and look at my pictures yeah. and listen to my music. Hey, she's <laughs> popping, y'all. Follow her. That <laughs> that ass, that ass, that ass. Thank you. Um, Cry Gang, you just want to say to the peoples? Shout out um, to Solange. Solange. Yeah, shout out to Solange. Poppy. Oh, yeah, shout out to Solange. Um, no, man, it's been, a, it's been nice <laughs> seeing. Of course, thank you so much for yeah. taking a uh, yes. journey to Jersey. Um, yeah, no, um, you're super dope, man. I always thank love you. seeing you. Yeah, I miss everybody, man. I miss you, Dante. Aww, yeah. I, miss I just hope everybody um yeah has Aww. a great week. Try not to stress over Happy too Thanksgiving. Much. Happy oh my yeah. Happy Happy holidays, yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't like to acknowledge Thanksgiving. I don't know if we call it Indigenous Peoples Day or yeah. just I like to just be thankful oh, for God, for life in general. So yeah, part. everybody be grateful, show gratitude. Yes. It makes life a little easier, you know. There's a lot of like bullshit that be happening in the world, but like, you know, people just take time to like just take time for yourself, man. Like, do what you like to do. Like, sometimes it's okay to be selfish. Just think about yourself yes. because there's too much in like. It's going okay on in the world. to be selfish. Yeah, mm-hmm. nothing is wrong with that. Be selfish, please. Yeah, but no, I appreciate you guys, and it's been a great episode, man. Yes. I enjoyed this. Ooh.